awesome sauce. Scene one, Apple, take one. What's up, everybody? How's it going out there? So, I came up with a new idea that I think is pretty cool, and so this is going to be the very first episode of it, and I'm going to be calling this like dinner date. What this basically is, is it's a scenario where I would have a dinner date with somebody that is famous, more than likely deceased, but you know, in that particular situation, what would you end up cooking for them? And so you end up having to do some research on the person, find out what their favorite meal is, like if they're allergic to things, whatever, um, and then end up making that meal for them for dinner. This is episode one, and this scenario is Marilyn Monroe. So Marilyn Monroe has agreed to have a dinner date with me, and she's going to be heading on over in a few hours, and I told her I'd make her her favorite meal. Now obviously Marilyn Monroe was not going to be showing up here. Um, that would be quite a trick. Anyway, sit back, enjoy, and I hope you like it. Will you have lunch with me? I always start with the stuff that's going to take the longest. We gotta make our dessert first. We need something that I know for sure that she likes. I know she likes sundaes, so we're gonna make an ice cream. We're gonna make an ice cream. Let's keep it basic. What we'll, what we'll do is we'll just make like a simple vanilla, a vanilla ice cream, and then we'll just make a really cool topping to make it look like it's a sundae. This is heavy cream. I'm gonna put one cup of heavy cream in this, and I'm gonna turn the, uh, stuff down, the fire down. Um, you know, so let me, let me do a cup and a half. Cup and a half of heavy cream. I don't need to make a whole lot. I don't think she's, it's not like cooking for Rosie O'Donnell. I'm gonna put a little salt inside here. This is a little bit of pink Himalayan salt. That's really more than enough. And I'm also gonna add sugar to this. This is about a quarter of a cup of sugar. And I'm going to be taking the rest of that sugar out of there as well. I don't want to add too much because we don't really have a lot of cream in there. The big question might be, well, how do you know that you have enough sugar in there? Well, let's go ahead and stir it up and we'll just give it a little bit of a taste. If it doesn't taste like melted ice cream with no flavoring, then we need to add a little bit more sugar. Let me get the rest of this out as well. I'm going to be using vanilla extract, even though a vanilla bean is better. That's just a capful. Make sure that make sure that I'm using real vanilla extract and not that artificial stuff. She can spot a fraud a mile away. Just tasted it, that's fantastic. It's not done yet. We gotta add some egg yolks to this. Two. And for that much cream I think that that will be perfect because the more eggs that I use, the more egg yolks I use, the more of a custard this will become and it will become a lot smoother and silky and seem a lot more refined and fancy. And man, she hangs out with those Hollywood bigwigs. I gotta keep up. Turn the heat up on this just a little bit. I don't want this to boil. I want this to almost scald. I mean, I just want this to come to temperature. As soon as it thickens, then I know we're good. As soon as it starts getting warm, I'm gonna stir it a little bit more often. After it comes to temperature, if it still doesn't seem like it's thick enough, um, and it'll thicken more as it cools, I can always add another egg yolk to it. And now I'm going to have to throw this in the ice cream maker. A lot of people just put this in the refrigerator. I ain't got time. She's going to be here in just a couple hours. Make sure that there ain't no egg particles or chunks of anything inside here. So I have just rinsed out the container. You hear the ice cream maker in the back. Stick of butter. That's equivalent to about a half a cup. We want to add equal parts sugar and we're going to be using dark brown, but you can also use light brown sugar as well. I'm going to add a little bit more. We're going to end up making a toffee um, uh, sauce for this. We're not going to end up making a caramel. Caramel seems a little too Coney Island, right? Even though she loves New York, I want to have something that's a little bit more sophisticated and toffee is there. You'll know this is ready really by the color of it, the smell of it, um, even the way that the texture is. 
and you're going to be seeing this thing wanting to boil and, and this thing is going to end up getting very 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 hot sugar holds heat fat holds heat you got to be really careful with this okay so now this is starting to smell like a toffee the texture is different and whatnot adding a little vanilla extract and it's going to bubble a lot okay Believe it or not, this is just a little bit of baking soda and it's going to have an impact on this. This is actually one of the tricks to making it like Cracker Jacks is you would end up adding baking soda and you'll notice that the texture is completely different now. And now we're going to end up adding an equal part heavy cream and I'm going to turn the, the fire off. So now I'm going to pour it inside this, put it in the refrigerator. Okay, as soon as it starts doing this, this tells me that it's time to take it out. This is our vanilla ice cream. And I'm going to take a little bit of it to taste it. Wow. Okay, that's like really good. It's like eating silk. So I had just tried a little bit of that toffee syrup. Um, with the remainder of the ice cream that was in the container and oh my god that was good okay so but I can't just give her ice cream I mean she's gonna sit there and say dude what you trying to do give me diabetes I got enough problems so what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up making one of her favorite vegetables which were carrots now she used to like eating them raw okay but we're not gonna end up doing that I'm gonna end up making some carrots that will go along the main dish so what I'm going to do is the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to peel these guys. I'm going to clean them and I'm going to peel them. The peels, I'm not going to throw away. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that actually in dog food. You guys know that I like using a uh, paper plate for my cutting board because I always know it's clean. I don't have to do any cleanup. It's really cheap. It's easy on my blades and it will hold juices too. It's just a lot easier. Now let's say you don't have a vegetable peeler. It's okay. What you do is you just use the back of your knife like this. It might not look as pretty, but it gets the job done. In fact, if we got rid of that first portion that we did right here, and then we just kept doing that over and over and over, we would end up having some nice grated carrot. It would be good for things like putting in meatloafs and believe it or not, chili. I want to make sure that this has still got a little bit of bite to it. So she kind of still gets the impression that there's a rawness to it. And what I'm doing here is and I'm cutting it at a slight angle and I'm making it a little large so that way I know when I'm cooking this there's always going to be a little bit on the inside that's kind of be almost kind of raw and it's going to give a little bit of that, that normal um, raw carrot flavor. A touch of olive oil in here and that's only to prevent the butter from browning. Half a stick of butter. I'm going to take some carrots. Throw them in there. This is, once again, sea salt. Let's throw some herbs in here. This is uh, fresh thyme. Oregano. A little bit of ro fresh rosemary from the garden time was from the garden. I think she'll appreciate it because I know that she liked the garden. Just a little bit of garlic but not too much. One of the big reasons why is because I don't want her to feel self-conscious about her breath as well as you know after dinner if we start making out or something I don't want to have to smell a bunch of garlic either. That would be shitty. A little bit of parsley to add a little bit more color. A little fresh ground pepper. We want it to have a little bit of, man that smells good. We want this to have a little bit of bite still so that way she gets the remnant of a fresh carrot. Because I want her to keep coming back for my carrot, if you know what I mean. Here's just a little bit of brown sugar. There is just a little bit of honey. I'm going to let these guys just go for a while. Let some of those sugars caramelize. Let some of these flavors just really get inside those carrots but I don't want them to become too soft either but as soon as they're done I can go ahead and take them off this right here 
I can go ahead and I can take this out and plate this, but I'm going to leave this herb and, and oil and stuff behind because I, I need that for my main dish. Which one should I give her? Um, I'm thinking this one. Um, she's only 5'5". Five five. I don't want to give her something too big that she won't be able to eat because then I'll be out that money that she doesn't eat. I mean, I guess I could eat her leftovers. You know what? You know, maybe I'll just give her a doggy bag. Is that tacky on the first day? I, I don't know. So um, let's go ahead and prep these guys. Now we've got we've got uh, two steaks, and as I've always mentioned before, any time that you cook a steak, I always bring well at least for me, I always bring it to room temperature first before I decide to cook it. Um, it just helps with the cooking process so much. What we're going to do once again is we're going to end up putting some sea salt on it, fresh ground black pepper. Pat that inside to make sure that it kind of sticks. Give it a flip. And we're going to do the same thing. You've got to make sure that the outside edges get a little bit of seasoning because that's always the first thing that somebody tastes. It's not the inside, it's the outside, right? Too many people focus here, not around the whole thing. Now I got to tell you, her only being about 118 pounds, if she can pound this, um, totally impressed. Totally impressed. I suspect she'll eat half. Let's go ahead and pour a little olive oil on this. We're going to be putting the olive oil on the steak. We're not going to be putting it in the pan. That's actually enough. When this thing is just looking like it's about to melt, that's when I want to put this piece of meat on. And earlier, like I had said, I put the oil on the meat and not in the pan because it would start burning the oil and give it a really bad flavor. And one thing for sure, I definitely do not want to flip this meat over with a fork or something like that because all the juices are going to escape and then Marilyn's going to bite into it and she's going to go, oh, this is the driest steak I ever had. And then she's going to look at me like I'm a chump, right? So that's no good. So make sure you use tongs or something along those lines to make sure you can turn it over without piercing the meat. I am not going to touch that steak for probably four or five minutes. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this shelf out. I'm going to put it on the highest spot in the oven, and that's what I need. Okay, I'm starting to smell this a little bit. I'm going to just use a spatula because I haven't uh, cleaned my, uh, uh, whatever you call those things, tongs in a while. But now, we got that nice sear, I'm going to do the same thing on this side. You know, a lot of people wouldn't think that Marilyn was a steak and potatoes type of girl, but she was. She had an interesting breakfast. I mean, she would have warm milk and a couple of raw eggs mixed in it for breakfast, but, you know, one of her comfort foods was basically steak and she liked eating raw carrots and she loved ice cream sundaes and stuff and of course everybody knows she likes her champagne and let's put this in the oven with a broiler on at 500 on the top because it's so close to the broiler it is going to be making a lot of smoke Okay. You might even get a little bit of a grease fire going. So this is what it looks like when you take it out of the broiler. And we're going to end up kind of making a sauce with the fat that's inside there. And we're going to add a little bit of butter. This also in turn is going to end up uh, kind of cooling it off a little bit. During the time that that stuff is going on, we're going to end up taking some fresh thyme, throwing that in there. And I've got some rosemary as well I took from the garden. We're going to put a little bit of rosemary in here. Give it a little bit more flavor. And we're going to let some of those flavors and scents from the herbs kind of penetrate the steak here a little bit. Man, that smells amazing. That smells amazing. I wish I had like a red plate to put this on because I honestly think she would 
be like, like, wow, that you know that looks fantastic. It smells fantastic. You know, and then red being one of her favorite colors, as well as white and black. I think that it would be a really good, a good thing. Unfortunately, I don't have that. But you do with you do the best you can with what you got. And I think that with what I have here, it's a winning combination. Let's put the uh, herb and caramelized carrots right here. And do you remember this oil? Well, we're going to pour that with the oil from the steak. And then we'll put our steak right there. We'll put a little bit of the uh, oil and butter. on here that was hit with the uh, herbs as well and of course with all meat you do not repeat you do not touch that steak for five minutes do not put anything in it all the juices will leave oh my god it smells good in here now I gotta put on some romantic music that I think would tickle her fancy. This song came out in 1939 and it was on the, the top charts in 1939. She was born in 1926. So this this is a probably like right around the junior high age. And I know for me the most of the music that I re I remember that you know really kind of takes me back to kind of gives me that uh, you know things used to be a lot better when I was younger feeling is right around junior high. And I think this is perfect, as well as, come on, it's an awesome tune. So this is what we're going to do. Walk straight there, and I'm walking straight up. But why this panic over a harmless little tete-a-tete supper? Oh, I know all about these harmless little tete-a-tete suppers. I've had to fight my way out of quite a few. Champagne, and I hope you like caviar, and something cold to follow, because we really don't want the servants around, do we? It's so much more fun serving ourselves, don't you think? And then after supper, Miss Marina, you must be very tired. Why don't you put your feet up on this nice sofa? Oh, no, I know every move. Wow. That is juicy right there. Mmm. Yummy. Oh my god, oh my god, the flavor. You know... See, so you'd be like, why don't you ever cook like this for me? Well, you're not Maryland, babe. <laughs> oh my god. I think... I usually only eat half, but I might end up being... I might end up eating this whole thing. The herbs. I'm like, oh my god, these carrots are perfect. They're, oh my god, this is probably the best steak. Of course. I've had. Oh my god, this is so good. See? Well, see, you're getting fed like Marilyn Monroe, babe. What mm -hmm. the hell? Maybe do, I, do I have to put out like her? <laughs> well, I mean, chances are she probably wouldn't put out. Oh, not for this? <laughs> well, no, I mean, it's like I don't... It was never really that. And anyway, you know you want to. What the hell? Why are you trying to like it's a job? <laughs> I'm teasing you, babe. <laughs> oh, my God, it's so good. I'm just stuffing my face. Don't worry about it. That's why I made it. I mean, Marilyn ain't gonna show up. Oh my god, on. these carrots are so good. Whew, yum. For everybody, remember how it, how loose it was? But this is what happens when you refrigerate it. I'm gonna microwave it a little bit so it'll go over the ice cream easier. And then so we're we're gonna take this and just kind of drizzle it over the top. Oh my god. Oh my god, that sauce is awesome. Even that ice cream. I know, it's insane, it's, isn't it? Oh my god. Mmm. This ice cream, oh my god, this is probably the best ice cream you've made. The texture and everything. I'm trying to get laid. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> there, I got tons of it. Is that enough? <laughs> do, you, do you want more? You put a little bit more. If you want more, I got tons. Oh my god. Mmm. This ice cream is really good. Oh, oh my god. That, I told you it was good, I huh? I can't stop eating that. I, I can, oh my god. You know, it's not even really sweet. You know, sometimes things are overly sweet and it's hard to eat. Mm-hmm. Mm -mm. 
The syrup is sweet though. Not for me. Uh, maybe we should have you check for diabetes. Anyway guys, that's that. Hopefully you enjoyed watching the video and you learned something and now you know how to make a meal that is suitable for Marilyn Monroe. And until next time, I will talk at you later.